Hey guys, I am so glad that you've chosen to join us at Calvary Online today. And we all have to admit that this season has certainly not been ideal. Going back to the quarantine mode, going back to social distancing after we began worshiping has been difficult on us all, especially on us trophy husbands. This quarantine has been really, really difficult. Okay, I'm kidding. So it's not been ideal, but you continue to join us week after week. And as we continue in our pandemic playlist sermon series, today we're going to be talking about face masks. Now you might wonder where are face masks mentioned in the Bible? Well, if you take a look at Romans 12, nine through 16, you're gonna see a parallel. Now, if you do not have a copy of the Bible that you can read or understand easily, I want to invite you to call our church office at 928-855-6533. Leave us your name and address and tell us that you don't have a Bible. We would love to either deliver one to you or mail one to you. Now, as we're talking about face masks, I want you to know something. Kids, I get it. You don't like wearing them. My daughters don't like wearing them. Most people in America don't like wearing them. But kids, I want to invite you to do me a favor. I want you to draw and color a picture of your entire family wearing a face mask. Uh, parents, you can share those pictures on our own social media, on your own social media page, and you can use the hashtag Calvary AZ and hashtag face mask. So now, why on earth are we talking about face masks? Trust me, I know all about the controversy brewing across the nation and even in our own community. Some say it's stupid and dumb to wear one. Others say it's stupid and dumb not to wear one. Now I have to be honest with you. I think both sides have valid arguments. We are indeed the land of the free. We get to wear what we want to wear. Yet, I make the decision to wear a face mask when I go into public. Uh, I wanna show you a picture of my new face mask. Tell me, tell me what do you think? I'm gonna put it on right now. You like it? How would you feel if I preached in this mask? Like right now. How about if I left it on for the entire message? Would you like it? Well, so let's take a quick poll. Without stirring up trouble and causing an argument, if you think I should leave it on for the rest of the message, let me know in the comments. And if you think I should take it off, let me know in the comments. I'm pretty positive that even though I can't see the comment section right now, most people who are going to comment will say, don't wear it to speak in. So I'm gonna take it off. Now our main passage of scripture addresses a specific type of face mask that early followers of Jesus were tempted to put on. The apostle Paul writes in Romans 12, nine, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of the passage yet. We're gonna get there, but I wanna camp out on this idea that early followers of Jesus were pretending to love other people. See, if they weren't pretending to love others, Paul would have never had to address it. It's important that we get pretending to love others is deception. Pretending to love others is lying. Pretending to love is deceit at the highest level. Think about this. According to Paul, love is the most excellent way to live. So pretending to love others must be the absolute worst way to live. And I've been there. I've been the recipient of phony love and I've been guilty of wearing the mask of phony love. Let me tell you about my journey of pretending to love. As a child, I was abused by my dad and he often told me, don't tell your mom, don't tell anybody. And for a long time, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody about what I was experiencing as a child because I was afraid that they would reject me if they discovered what was happening and what had happened to me. I never let people get 
to know the real me. I held them at a distance. Even throughout my teenage years, I, I joked around, I cut up, but I never let people into my private world. Although I was not yet a follower of Jesus, I pretended to like and I pretended to love other people. I wore a mask. At 2 a.m., my dad would be hurling insults at me, threatening me and calling me names in a drunken rage. But at 6.45, I would get on the school bus with a smile and pretend that everything was great. Can I confess something to you? I, I'm still guarded. I don't pretend to love other people, but I don't let them into my life very easily. If I sense that I'm not fully able to trust somebody, I put on a mask, I play pretend. And the reason is because I don't trust what that person's going to do with my personal life. Even as a pastor, I've been attacked and hurt by people who profess to be followers of Jesus, but they really seem to enjoy hurting me. I've been told by some pastor, I have your back only to have them stick a knife in it. So the reality is, I am still guarded about who to trust. That's my confession. So let me ask you something. Do you have a habit of wearing a mask when you are around other followers of Jesus? Do you wear a mask? Do you pretend that everything is going great with your life? Are you guarded? Do you shut yourself off from a community of believers in Jesus because you don't feel like you measure up to what a follower of Jesus is supposed to be like? Let me show you a picture. This is Ken and Barbie. Ken and Barbie have the perfect eyes. They have the perfect ears. They have the perfect noses. They have the perfect legs. They have the perfect faces. They live in a perfect dream house. They go out on a perfect lake in their perfect boat. They have a perfect dog. They have a perfect life. They have no problems. They have no anxious thoughts. They have no struggles with sin. They are perfect. Some followers of Jesus think they are supposed to project an image of perfection. They think they are supposed to have it all together. They think they are not supposed to tell anybody about their problems, their struggles. And so they put on a mask and they pretend. Now, let me show you another picture. This is Joe and Christy and the rest of my family. We are not a Ken and Barbie. We are not perfect. Our marriage is not perfect. Our family is not perfect. We are an imperfect people who have real struggles. We have real financial messes. We have real concerns. We are messed up, broken, troubled, worried, and even sometimes fearful people, but we genuinely love God. Now, perhaps like you, we still are in this struggle to peel back our masks and simply enjoy the genuine company of other messed up, broken, troubled, worried, and sometimes fearful followers of Jesus. But if we can muster up the courage to truly be genuine with other people, to take off our mask, to stop stiff arming people and keeping them a safe distance away, if we can stop pretending to love, and learn to truly love, we are going to experience so much joy, so much hope, and so much life change, we will all wonder why we kept our masks on for so long. Mask wearers think that masks protect them, but actually masks prevent us from enjoying life change. Now I want us to look at what Paul goes on to write in the rest of this passage. If these followers of Jesus stop pretending to love others and truly begin to love other people, watch as they love others, watch what they will be able to experience. We're gonna pick back up in verse 10 and look at what happens when you stop pretending and begin to genuinely love others. 
Love each other with genuine affection. Take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other and don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. I got to tell you, when we pretend to love others, we are not able to rejoice together over what Jesus has really done in our lives. When we pretend to love others, we can't really help others because we're only focused on ourselves. We don't care about the needs of others. We can't weep with those who weep. We can't be happy with those who are happy. We can't live in harmony with others and we can't be enthusiastic about being a follower of Jesus. But when we let down our guard, when you and I take off our mask, and begin to fully love, genuinely love one another. It's an incredible, incredible thing. There is somebody who needs you to be willing to be vulnerable, to be honest about your life, to be honest about your marriage, to be honest about your fears, your worries, and the mess that you sometimes find yourself in and that somebody is you. So lower the mask, take off your mask. When we take off our masks, we experience God's grace, his mercy, his kindness and forgiveness together. When we take off our masks as followers of Jesus, we enjoy growing together in a relationship with God. When we take off our mask, when we let down our guard, when we let others into our broken, messy lives, we make a statement that you and I are convinced that Jesus' death on the cross paid the penalty for all our sins. We become bold about forgiveness. We become grace-filled, compassionate people because we're living our lives demonstrating we really believe what Jesus did for us on the cross erased our debt. He forgave our sin and that Jesus doesn't hold our sin against us any longer. So when we gather together with other followers of Jesus, we are freed to take off our masks, to be vulnerable, to demonstrate love because we know we've been forgiven. And that right now is precisely what this world needs us to be doing. The world needs compassionate, grace-filled people right now more than any other time in recent years. Followers of Jesus don't judge one another. Followers of Jesus don't nitpick things that are going on. Have grace, show mercy. We need, as Paul writes here, we need people who don't act like they know it all that people who walk in genuine love and humility, followers of Jesus, we must make allowance for each other's faults. That's what we're supposed to do. So there's no need to wear a mask if we really are following Jesus and living like Jesus did. If somebody confesses something to you, you, you embrace them and you hug them and you love them and you pray them through it. So I want to encourage you, when life groups resume, 
Commit to joining a life group and taking off your mask. When Celebrate Recovery resumes, and maybe they've already have, I've been out of the loop for a little bit, but when Celebrate Recovery resumes, commit to being involved with a community as they work through hurts, hangups, and bad habits together. But before that, make sure your mask is off in your relationship with God. See, sadly, Jesus spoke about people who went to church, they went to mission trips, they taught about God, they did all kinds of good, I mean, really good things. But, of, but instead of commending them after they died and welcoming them into God's kingdom, Jesus had to say to those people, depart from me, I never knew you. Why? They did so much good. They cast out demons. They worked miracles. They taught about God. But privately, they wore a mask and they never received Jesus as their savior. They never experienced a new life in Christ. They never experienced forgiveness of sins and they never committed their lives to Jesus. Now, if you would like more information about becoming a follower of Jesus and receiving Christ as your savior, you can reach out to us right now. Our ministry team, our online ministry team is ready to help you understand exactly what it means to take off your mask with God and trust in Jesus. Well, thanks for joining us here today. I want to invite you, lose those masks. They're not helpful for anybody. Leave them at home. But when you go out in public, wear your mask. Let's pray together. Father, I wanna say thank you first and foremost for the ability to gather together with other believers right now across Lake Havasu and Parker and across the country. Lord, it is my prayer that followers of Jesus would rise up and remove the mask that they're wearing that prevents them from having genuine fellowship and genuine connection with other believers. And the stronger that we become as believers in Jesus, the more of an impact we can make in our communities wherever we are. And so God, I ask and pray boldly that you would allow us to be genuine, authentic, transparent, and real. Thank you, Father, that I belong to a church like Calvary that values transparency and genuineness. And Father, may we continue to experience life change together. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, I'm so glad that you spent time with us today. I'm so glad that you spent time watching this message and applying it to your life. Now I want to encourage you, let's worship one more time. And if this message today has blessed you, create a watch party and share it and let the gospel get carried to as far as the internet can carry it. God bless. I can't wait to see you again.